Well, hello. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. I pray you're having a wonderful day. God is on the throne. Jesus is alive and well. Hallelujah. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's living right here in my heart and in yours. Isn't that amazing? I thank God for being saved today, and I'm grateful, my friends, that we are well into the the uh, the year. Today is what, the 25th? 25th? Hey, hey uh, I, I promise this is probably the last time that I'm going to say to you, Happy New Year, but uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's a good lead into what God has said for us for this new year. Our theme is to serve the Lord only. Serve the Lord only. Joshua 24, 14, and 15 teaches that if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord only, uh, uh, King James says serve the Lord, but the context is serving the Lord only because he's telling them to get rid of the gods that they picked up while they were in the wilderness and the gods that they picked up while they were in Egypt. These people was trying to walk in some kind of divine syncretism where they could synchronize other teachings and doctrines and mix it in to their relationship with Yahweh. And Yahweh said then... As Yahweh has said, now, it ain't happening. You're going to either serve me only or you won't serve me at all. And here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, we're declaring, we're declaring, serve the God of the Bible only. My position is this. Christianity doesn't need to be tweaked. Christianity doesn't need to be uh, revisited. Christianity doesn't, it certainly doesn't need to be rethought. You know, just rethinking Christianity. Get out of here with that garbage. The only thing Christianity needs is to be lived. Read the word of God, see what God says, and obey him, and you will be blessed of the Lord and highly favored, and you'll be glad that you did. What a mighty God we serve. I have a passage of scripture that I want to read to you, and uh, I pray that it will bless you as much as it has blessed and has strengthened me, and, it's, and it helps me understand what I'm seeing in the church world and in society today. You have to admit, 2024 has come in with a boom. I mean, have you ever seen anything like it? It's exploding online. It's exploding on podcasts. It's exploding in churches. It's exploding. We're seeing people dance in church like they're at Soul Train. We're seeing uh, preachers uh, behave in manners that are eh, that's not becoming for the pulpit, not becoming for preachers. Preachers are trying to be movie stars. Now, our gospel singers are trying to be worldly stars. I said this the other day, and I want to say it again. If I was a lost, liquor-drinking, dope-smoking, foul-mouth, cussing, let's see, woman-chasing, uh, dope, did I say dope-smoking? All right, so, uh, uh, cocaine-snorting, for those who do it, chain-wearing, dreadlock-wearing, pants, hanging off my uh, behind wearing uh, tattoo all tatted up everywhere uh, uh, hip hop artist or worldly person I certainly would feel empowered I would feel strong I would feel oh my god like I'm on top of the world well why would you feel that way wouldn't I'm glad you asked. I would feel that way because I'm noticing that all of the church preachers, the church entertainers, the church gospel singers, the, the, the church people, they're trying to look and sound like me. They want my approval. They'll do anything to be invited on my podcast. When given a chance to pray for me, they won't pray for my salvation for fear that pointing out to me that I'm not saved may be offensive. So you pray for things like uh, God opened the door to give us another opportunity to do this and an opportunity to do that. You know, about like Kurt Franklin did when he prayed for Shannon Sharpman. Brother, and Shannon asked for prayer. Get rid of Shannon's, it's his, it's his podcast. He said, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to ask you to pray. The man prayed for everything but salvation. Everything except souls coming to Jesus. 
and knowing Christ as their savior. What kind of preacher uh, is that? What kind of preacher does that? I would think that if I, I used to think that, that and I'm, I guess I was wrong, that if you get your opportunity on the world stage, you get your shot and God elevates you. Oh my you then take that opportunity, whether you get a thousand of them or a million of them or just one, and you say what God says and you leave it on record that you spoke for your Lord. No, that's not what we're seeing today. That's not what we're seeing at these concerts. That's not what we're seeing in these churches. We're seeing saints trying their best. Many of you have aged out we're seeing saints trying their best to be like the world, to act like you, act like your street. Some of you, you've come up in the church all your life. You are not street. Why do you want to come across as street? Why come? A, why are you trying to come across as uh, uh, like you've been out there on drugs or you've been mugging and thugging and killing and stealing? When the Lord blessed you to come up into the church, you know, people are almost ashamed. Like they're, they're ashamed to say, I was raised in church. Unless they say, I was raised in church. And then after they say that, there is an endless diatribe, an endless soliloquy of what was wrong with the church, the problem with the church, the thing that was bad about the church, or, oh, the church this, the church, just constant put downs. Well, I'm going to say this to you, and I mean it. Uh, I don't think any woman on, this fa on the face of this earth, including the one who, who married me, I don't think any woman would have been wise to marry me without the church. I don't think that I would be a holy man of God without the church. The discipline of the church, the teachings of the church changed me. I did not seek to learn nor to study nor to achieve until I met Jesus. I met him in the 11th grade. I was almost about to be kicked out of school and I graduated an outstanding senior. You know why? Because my pastor handed me a Bible and he said, read this. It may have well, Brother Gary, been written in Mandarin. And so I said, I, I can't understand the King James Version. But since I had to learn it, I went to work and fell in love with learning and turned things around. And here I sit before you now, 46 years later committed to this same book and the God of this book. And I don't have a diatribe. I don't have 40 and 50 and 60 minutes to spend with you talking about what the church is not. And, and I dress like I dressed because I was trying to impress church folk. And I did this because the church folk, how about talking about Satan? How about saying something against demons? How about speaking out against wickedness? I tell you this, I noticed that's one area of the, of the church folk talk that these people don't talk about. You don't bring up them sisters. You don't bring up the perverts. You don't talk about that. That deserves to be talked about. You see, there is something wrong. There is something wrong. And I'm calling all the preachers, those who follow this ministry. You stand up for God's truth. You say what God has said. And the Lord will bless you real good. Peter said this in 2 Peter chapter number 2. It says, uh, and beginning at the first verse says, but there were false prophets also among the people. The people was, was a common designation in the Old Testament speaking of Israel, the Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jews. They were called the people. So he says there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Um, that is in the church who privately shall bring in damnable heresies who almost, who almost secretly in a clandestine way. You won't see it at first. They will bring in damnable heresies. They will bring in doctrines that are contrary to the orthodoxy of the church. What the church t taught, teach and will always teach what the church used to believe, currently believe and shall always believe. These, these heresies attack 
the teachings of the church. And one of the great attacks on Christianity, and I hear it, I hear it in many of you. Yes, the white man used the Bible, used Christianity to control black and brown people. Why would a black preacher say that? When the Christian, listen, in the South, many slave owners did use the scriptures to try to justify slavery. But how about this? Because, you know, Gary, these people don't know that uh, slavery was in the South. You know, <clears throat> there's a reason why Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, you know, especially Tubman, they, they, were, they were escaping to the North. There's a reason why they followed the, the North Star. Uh, there was freedom in the North. So the whole country was never uh, consumed and given to slavery. But abolitionists, white, black, white and black abolitionists use this same Bible to end slavery. The, the, the God of this book convicted men, white and black, that it was wrong for one man to own another man as cattle. That it was wrong for men to enslave their fellow brethren. That it was wrong for white people. And, uh, you know, if some of our first slave owners weren't white. Uh, to enslave, for any people to enslave another people. And you know what? America is the only country that I know of that fought, that fought a war. Millions of Americans died, both white and black, to bring an end to slavery. And those who fought against it were motivated by this book. So it's not this book that's trying to, is, is being used to control black and brown people. How about Karl Marx? How about socialism and Marxism? How about the writings of Lewinsky? who wrote the book Rules for Radicals and gave a shout out to the world's first radical and the first radical that he mentions that he gave a shout out to was a radical named Lucifer. And many of the politicians on the left, Hillary Clinton, President Barack Obama, and many of them, they are self-professed Alinskyites. What about them? These are the people who have tried to control black and brown people. Christianity sets people free. Now, I want to tell you something, brother. Don't you let the devil cause you to mishandle this book. Don't you allow that uh, liberal uh, theological seminary that you went to uh, put that uh, black liberation theology stuff in your head and have you where you doubt the sincerity of the word of God. And you're now trying to preach the Bible uh, in the, the social way. See, the problem with the social gospel is this. The social gospel blames everybody except the individual. The social gospel does. The, the, those who have become the social gospel preachers, they do not preach. <clears throat> they do not stress being born again, the blood of Jesus, healing, personal responsibility and accountability. No, the, all of the problems is, is just uh, 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 systemized, uh, systemic, systemic, that's the word, systemic racism, systemic racism, everything. And everything is about race. If there is a disagreement for any reason on any subject, it's got to be race. And these people will tell you that they teach that racism is in the stew. It's a part of everything. Well, how are we going to have unity? How are we going to be able to sit down and have conversations with people who we agree with or disagree with if uh, all you you just believe that everybody whose color is not the same as yours, whether you're white or black, this is true for both sides, but white and black. Uh, if you just assume that everybody whose color is opposite of yours, that they're, they're against you because of your color, you can't talk. You can't communicate. Yes, this, this, this country suffered with an, the ugly sin of uh, slavery. And uh, the ugly sin of racism. But the cure is the word of God. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Preached with power and authority. Christ died for every man. And 
Christ did die for one man to subjugate another man. Uh, Christ is not interested in blessing one man to serve as a, a suzerain over other men. No, Christ died to set people free. And what I love about biblical Christianity, Gary is the great equalizer because we're equally guilty and we all get cleansed at the foot of the cross by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that these men will come in and bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. See, that's what's happening now. That's what's happening now. Deny, denying the Lord that bought them and bring into themselves swift destruction. And here's what's sad. Now I got to wrap this up. And many shall follow their pernicious, that is, their shameful and destructive ways by reason. Here's how they're going to fool you. Here's how they're going to do it. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. I have never heard so many preachers speak ill of the gospel. I've never heard so many preachers and singers and Oh, my. Criticize the church, the word of God. And they criticize, they criticize the church and the word of God and the things of God in front of sinners. Do you think you're going to win them? You'll never win them that way. And it is apparent that most of you have never read Psalms 39 and verse 1. Well, the Bible says most of you who do that, who, who, who do that, who when you get in front of the world, you criticize the church and you put the church down. Psalm 39 and one says, David says, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. You know, you, you, you ought to at least sound like you're on the Lord's side. You ought to at least, I don't care where you are, I don't care what podcasts you own, I don't care what company of people, because they're all just people, they're all die, and, and people need to be saved. If they don't get saved, they're going to hell. It, was, it, would, it would seem to me um, that if you're in the company of the wicked, that you would speak up for the, for the things of God. And I imagine those of you who were lured into some of these people's concerts who won't speak up for God. I imagine you feel like a sucker now. You're going to buy the ticket. You're going to get dressed. You're going to the show. Put, set aside your time. You show up. You come ready to praise the Lord. And you find out that the man ain't even there to minister to you. He's just there to have fun and to twerk and to dance like the world and do all of the worldly moves while you're at a gospel concert. Now, I noticed this. I'm a football fan. I've, I've, I've watched the halftime show. I watched about two minutes of them because they got some of the most untalented people on earth doing those shows. But I haven't seen any of, the, uh, any of them. They had the artist Rihanna one year and this person, that person. Haven't seen any of them even act like they were at church. Even sound like church. Haven't seen any of them dressed like they were going to church. They don't, they don't move like the church move. They, oh my, uh, they, don't, uh, they, they, they don't get down like that. Mm -mm. They want to have nothing to do with it. And it seems to me, many of you who name the name of Christ don't want to have anything to do with it either. Well, you can pretty much guarantee this. I won't support you. And I'm going to spread the word with everything that I have in me. It's time to come up. It's time to do right. I, you know, Gary, when I do these things, I'm, I'm here to invite people to church. I'm here to invite people to church. And then when I start talking, when I start talking, oh, the scriptures, they just, they come to mind, Brother Leach. They come to mind and they come to mind. The Lord said this, I ought to save it for sermons. <laughs> But, you know, God tends to, he, he's speaking. The Lord says something to the prophet Jeremiah, and I'm going to end with this and invite you to service tonight. The Lord said this in Jeremiah chapter number 15 and verse 19. Therefore, look at this, thus saith the Lord. God says to the prophet Jeremiah, 
If thou return, shake off your distrust, Jeremiah, then will I bring thee again. I will revive you, Jeremiah, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, that is, if you separate the, that which is precious and that which is sacred from that which is profane, from that which is wicked, from that which is evil. If you separate the precious from the vile, he says to Jeremiah, thou shall be as my mouth. And he says to him, let them return unto thee but return not thou unto them. That is, they must come up to the righteous standards, but don't you lower the standards for them. We're seeing preachers today, artists, those who name the name of Christ. You're constantly lowering the, the standard. You're constantly mixing the vile and the precious which corrupts the precious. And instead of challenging the loss to come up, raising the standards, we're lowering the standards. I've preached often, I've talked often about the soft bigotry of low expectations. When it comes to the black community, it seems like everybody lowers the standard. The black male doesn't, to be accepted and all that, he doesn't even, he doesn't even have to pull his pants up. Why, you see that with white people too, but uh, we're a minority in this country and we're a shrinking one. We need uh, to hold the standards, raise the standards, and when people come to church, they need to see church. They need to hear church. They need to see church lived out. See Jesus lifted up. And if they do, when they see it, they're going to get saved. Now, uh, I am, to be transparent and honest with you tonight, on my way back home from the leadership conference of the Church of God in Christ from Atlanta, Georgia. But before you sign off, I have a ram in the bush who is going to preach the word of God with power and authority. And he's going to preach it and let go with both barrels. The elder John Amanchuku, my first assistant, is going to deliver the word of the Lord tonight. If you're familiar with John, you know that he is a gospel preacher and he's a fearless man of God. You know that he has traveled this nation going from school board to school board, fighting for the minds of our children, trying to keep inappropriate books out of libraries, to keep pornography, pornography from little minds that are not, and little eyes that's not ready to see it. And people criticize him and says, you know, uh, he's trying to ban books. No, he's trying to ban por pornographic literature. Are you one of them who believe that pornographic literature shouldn't be kept from children? Is that where you are? Is that where you are? Preacher, teacher, rev, man of God, mom, dad, do you actually think that it's all right for children to read books that are so filthy that the school board did not, wouldn't allow him to read the books at the school board because they felt that it was too bad. And he's also the author, I just happened to have a copy here, of the book Erased. Gary, let him see it. Erased, uncovering the lies of critical race theory and uh, abortion. And abortion. He is an awesome preacher and you're going to be blessed by this man of God tonight. As I said, he is my first assistant. He's a tremendous husband and a tremendous father. 
He happens to be married to my daughter, Crystal, and they've given Pamela and me uh, three wonderful, wonderful grandchildren, and I admire this man of God. So he will be ministering the word of the Lord tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. You want to hear him. I pray that he would even share some of the experiences that have come his way as he has had. uh, Listen, he's had many acts, chapter number one, chapter number two, three, four, five, six experiences where he's clashing with the authorities, clashing with people who are fighting to try to keep junk in our children's hands. John, continue to preach and let the Lord use you. Saints, I want you to uh, turn out tonight and uh, 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 as if it were me and, and let the word of God bless you real good. Now, my time is up. Join us tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ where the elder John Amanchuku is going to <laughs> preach. And you will most definitely say amen. We'll see you Sunday right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.